On January 23, 2005, the Philadelphia Eagles and the Atlanta Falcons played in the NFC Championship game to find out which NFC team was Super Bowl bound. So I decided to get together a few faithful Eagles fans to react to how they felt about the game and how it currently stacks up when it comes to Philadelphia Eagles lore, looking back from almost 15 years ago. These are their reactions to the 2004-2005 NFC Championship game. Enjoy! I mean, we turned around from 5-11 to 11-5. And then the following year, we lost to the Rams in the, in the NFC title game, but the Rams were still the greatest show on turf. In St. Louis, we lost by five points. No shame in that game. Now, the Buccaneers-NFC championship game. Like, I'm ready for this game because I was so sure. Last game of the vet, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Or we never lose the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I, I thought we were going to win that game. It's etched in the memory of so many Eagles fans' minds that Barber picked six. That is the last thing people remember about Veteran Stadium. You know, and that unfortunately was the last game at the Vet. Last but not least, the Panthers. Very sloppy. Um, we really should have won that game. But we didn't. That was probably one of the worst games I've ever watched. Uh, you know, I, I blocked out of my mind. I couldn't tell you a thing about it now, but I remember at the time, it's probably one of the worst games I've watched. The loose of the Panthers scored three points at home, only got 14 points. Pathetic. That's my feeling. You want my feeling on it? Pathetic. The thing that made 2004 season seem a little bit different and made us feel that we could get over that hump, but to me, it's obvious. I think it's T.O. I mean, there was no reason to think that, uh, especially coming off the Carolina loss, that all we needed was some more offense and we go out and get, you know, at that time at least, the greatest receiver. Terrell Owens being the big piece that came in uh, potentially to get the Eagles over the hump. Um, he was definitely a big part of everything and he, he, was, he was one of the reasons why we were able to you know, blow a lot of these teams out. If you saw any of the games we played in 2004, we had a killer instinct. We blew out a lot of teams, especially in our own division. They pretty much looked like the best team in the NFL, wire to wire from start from week one uh, until the end of the season. The team had way more heart than they ever had the last uh, three years. We had our own slogan at the time called One Team, One City, One Dream. I saw a family. I saw charisma, you know. It, is, it, it, was, it was exciting all year. I'm glad that those two guys were the first two black quarterbacks to play because Vic eventually became an Eagle. And in a lot of ways, I'm a bigger Vic fan than McNabb. I, I, I know that's probably... Not a lot of people like to hear. Michael Vick was just fast, you know. His arm wasn't 100% there like it was when he was with us. He, he did have a great arm, just not the accuracy to throw that far. But he was definitely fast. Just couldn't catch him. But he was another guy I, could, I, I thought would have won a Super Bowl. But then again, this is the Atlanta Falcons we're talking about. So maybe that wasn't the team. Donovan McNabb, you know, wasn't as mobile as Michael Vick, but he can actually get around and be very creative. You know, when he feels like he's about to be sacked or he needs uh, time for someone to get open, he always makes it happen. Uh, obviously breaking the barriers, shattering that glass ceiling, smash! Obviously great for racial equality, obviously, because the only uh, black quarterback to win a Super Bowl uh, was uh, Doug Williams. Uh, so at the time, I really didn't think much of it. Uh, if you would have told me then that it was the first time it happened, I would have been shocked because there's been plenty of great African-American quarterbacks before, during, and since that time. It showed young African-American boys who play football. There is a chance for them to be successful and potentially win a Super Bowl or play in a Super Bowl at least. The atmosphere of that game, I think a lot of fans at least thought it was the perfect scenario uh, for the win. It was like 20 degrees, everybody you know, was going crazy, but that happens every game, so that's not really anything different. There was a big snowstorm that came in. They had to have volunteers come out, help clean the stadium and get it ready. The weather absolutely sucks when your team like Atlanta um, is not used to these kind of weather conditions. It's 20 degrees. The winds are gusting super fast. It's like 36, 37 miles per hour. It's not a game that you want to be in these kind of conditions for. Everywhere I went, there were Eagles jerseys everywhere. You feel me? And the, the I can only imagine what it was like being over there during the game. Obviously, of course, our fans are obviously rabid and high energy during the season. Take a playoff game, take the uh, atmosphere from a pregame, and yeah, 
You can obviously tell we were high energy. I think back then everybody's strategy for stopping Michael Vick, because good luck if you actually did it, but I think the strategy was always, you know, prevent him from running, make him use his arm, you know, keep him in the pocket. Shut him down. Show no mercy. Make this guy afraid to run, to scramble around. Make him scared. Make him very hesitant. Do not give the guy any opportunity to make plays or scramble around the field because he will make a play. He will do that. you got to use more than just a spy against Michael Vick. A spy a lot of times won't even work because he's just too quick. The Eagles strategy and what they did was it was all about containment. You wanted to contain Michael Vick. And if you watch that game, the defensive line was so disciplined in staying in their lanes and, and keeping Vick contained. It was it was a huge success and one of the reasons why we won the game. The whole defense as a whole was coached up very well by Jim Johnson, God rest his soul, but this defense did not make many mistakes. And Vic, we held at 26 rushing yards, was his lowest in any game that year. I think he passed for 136 yards. The one play that will always be remembered is is Brian Dawkins just absolutely creaming Algie Crumpler, just taking his head and putting it in his chest. <laughs> that crazy hit. Oh, my God. And the hit on Algie Crumpler, where uh, Dawkins sent essentially 100,000 volts of electricity through him with that huge hit. It got everybody going. Uh, got you pumped up man that was tremendous one of the greatest hits i've ever seen in football every time i watch this play I just, i'm absolutely amazed that he held on to the ball because this was a hit that this just plays in my mind over and over and over and over and over again something that you probably couldn't do today there was another pass later in the game to greg lewis uh, McNabb kind of yeah it was a pretty it was a pretty pass I don't know if it gets tipped or something uh, but it's under throw and he has to make this ridiculous adjustment I, I'm not going to say he was T.O. but he was the wide receiver we needed to step up the interception late in the game Brian Dawkins had on Vic where he catches it on his knees that was kind of what slammed the door on Atlanta from what I remember in that game and for whatever reason Dawkins then goes to the end zone and picks up a pylon and like slams it down. Another one was Chad Lewis's catch in the corner of the end zone, his second touchdown of the game, a guy who twice over was a waiver wire um, escapee. When he breaks his foot, but he basically scored that touchdown, it was game over at that point. To win by 17 points without Terrell Owens in the game, I think for a lot of people was extremely reassuring that this team had grown up even more and could step up in big games and, it, and then there was talks on if he would you know play in the Super Bowl which is a whole nother conversation of course. I mean obviously it would have been great to have him. Injuries happen. We had overcome a lot beforehand and obviously injuries are part of the game. It just meant that this could be a team of destiny. Even if we lose our player nothing's gonna stop us from reaching the Super Bowl. But for this receiving core to you know let's be honest by signing T.O. it was almost saying that the organization didn't think they could get it done uh, with the group that they had. I was very confident, especially being as though when T.O. was going to return. I mean, in the NFC Championship, we didn't need T.O. to blow out the Falcons. And the Falcons were really good that year. But in the Super Bowl, I was like, I was, I was already imagining the Eagles winning their first ever Super Bowl. And I just remember feeling the air fill my lungs, cool air fill my lungs, and just be like being able to relax. Only for like a night or two, because then you realize you have to play the, the, the Patriots and you need Owens, you know? My feelings was this, and this is what I said leading up to the Super Bowl. If the Eagles have Terrell Owens and he can play, they're going to win. If they don't have Owens, they're going to lose. I would never let myself get too confident because I just, I don't work that way. I don't let, I don't talk crap. It's not a done deal. Like, that's just not how I am with things. But I was, I had no reason to think that we couldn't. Uh, it was just a matter of how that game would flow. You know, the the Patriots, they, they are a dangerous team. They could become a potential dynasty, and that's what they, that is what they became. Um, but without Terrell Owens, uh, there was no way we were going to win this game. It, it means something. It meant something to go to the Super Bowl. I'd never seen the Eagles in the Super Bowl. I was too young for the 1980 team. But at the time, at the time, it, it, it to me, the NFC Championship game meant nothing because we just lost the Super Bowl. I don't, I, I don't agree with that sentiment. Um, obviously, losing to the Patriots stunk 
for a long time there, we just had that NFC Championship to go off of. You can brag about NFC Championships all you want, but it's going to be well, well forgotten if you don't win the Super Bowl. I wouldn't say that it's meaningless because I mean, this was the first time that we broke through. We still had a lot of our guys on our contract. And you had a chance to win, let's be honest, if you if you don't make mistakes early in that game. And it really sucked because that's when they didn't really look the same. I mean, they, they didn't play four quarters. The game was very close, but they couldn't play four quarters. You remember the pass, the touchdown pass? Should have had Westbrook on a touchdown pass. He throws an interception. McNabb, McNabb, I think he had a great game, to be honest with you. Terrell Owens was so good that game that I believe he should have won the MVP despite not winning the game. That's how dominant Terrell Owens was that game. We still had McNabb, uh, Westbrook. Hopefully we were going to have T.O., but it just the whole situation just didn't work out. I feel like all effort you put in, whether you win the title, break records, going to Pro Bowl, all that type of stuff, it won't mean anything if we don't win a Super Bowl. I think it still meant a lot to me. I think I meant more after hearing all the stuff that went on in New England and how, you know, it was, I didn't feel like it was a fair loss. It proved that we could get over the NFC title game hump finally after one, two, three failed attempts to finally get over that hump. There were so many beloved players and you saw this team grow up. So to make it to that point, it literally did feel like mission accomplished. And maybe that was the issue. Maybe getting to the Super Bowl was the goal after how that all went down and we didn't put enough focus into maybe winning it. But it didn't take away from the fact that we finally got over the NFC title hump. It took another 15 years and oddly enough against the same damn team with the same damn starting quarterback, oddly enough, that the Eagles were finally able to hoist that Lombardi trophy in victory. In revenge that was served up as cold as the Rockies. Which is something that you could expect uh, after these 15 long years of misery. They finally got it done.